No Viet, ever wonder what keeps the digital world spinning smoothly without us even noticing? Ah, Hu Tao, you always have these intriguing questions. What exactly are you referring to? I'm talking about Site Reliability Engineers, or SREs. They're like the unseen guardians ensuring our online services stay healthy. SREs, you say? It sounds like a crucial role. How exactly do they maintain the health of these services? Well, they take a comprehensive approach. Think of it like a hierarchy, sort of like how Maslow categorized human needs. A hierarchy? That's fascinating. How does this framework apply to their responsibilities? At the base, it's about making sure systems function at all. As you move up, it's about enhancing functionality and taking control, rather than just fixing issues as they arise. So the idea is to be more proactive than reactive, ensuring service self-actualization, if you will. Exactly. It's like giving a service the tools it needs to thrive and evolve, not just survive immediate hurdles. How did this concept become so pivotal for organizations like Google? Back in late 2013, Google SREs worked on launching healthcare.gov. They had to devise ways to boost system reliability, which led to formulating this service hierarchy. Interesting. That must have been quite the undertaking, introducing such a fundamental change. It was. It showcased a radically different culture they had to adapt to, but it also solidified the importance of structured reliability practices. You mentioned parallels to Maslow. Can you explain how this hierarchy directly impacts the user experience? Of course. Just like how basic human needs must be met before achieving self-fulfillment, a system's basic functions need reliability before it can offer enriched user experiences. So without addressing those foundational needs, higher-level functions can't truly be trusted. Correct. It's about ensuring every step up the hierarchy is secure before moving on to more complex goals. And what about the role of tools in this framework? Are they pivotal for achieving this hierarchy? Absolutely, tools are the backbone. They provide the visibility and control needed to monitor, manage, and refine each level effectively. You've got me very curious about these practices now. Are they specific to large corporations like Google, or do they have broader applications? While Google's take is unique, the principles can be applied across various scales. Any organization looking to improve reliability can borrow these concepts. It's enlightening to see such structured thought applied to something as dynamic as web services. How does this affect the individual SRE? For SREs, it transforms their role from mere problem fixers to architects of reliable systems, empowering them to design with long-term sustainability in mind. This must require a significant mindset shift for those in traditional operational roles. Definitely, it emphasizes evolution rather than just maintaining status quo, encouraging a culture of continuous improvement. A culture of improvement. Quite inspiring. How do these ideas integrate with a team's existing strategies? The integration hinges on building a shared understanding of reliability goals. It involves adapting their strategies to align with the hierarchy's principles. Does this hierarchy also address challenges outside of sheer reliability? like efficiency or cost-effectiveness. It does. As reliability strengthens, it often brings greater efficiency and cost savings because systems become more predictable and require less reactive intervention. Enchanting. So improving one aspect can cascade benefits throughout the system? Precisely, Noviet. It's about creating a harmonious cycle where reliability supports growth and vice versa. I see. Such intricate thinking behind these digital fortresses. What role do humans play in this hierarchy? Humans inject creativity, oversight, and adaptability into these systems. They're vital for making nuanced decisions machines alone can't. Thank you, Hu Tao. Your insights paint a vivid picture of this fascinating field. Hu Tao, you have piqued my interest with the concept of these mystical SRE practices. Could you tell me more about their core responsibilities? Oh, I'd be delighted, Noviet. At the heart of it all lies monitoring. It's the foundation of being aware of any hiccups before the users even sniff trouble. So monitoring is crucial, but wouldn't that just overwhelm the SREs with tons of notifications? How do they manage all that information? Great question. SREs design sophisticated monitoring systems that filter out the noise, 
allowing them to focus on alerts that require immediate attention and action. It sounds like a dynamic work environment. Once a problem is detected, what's the next step? This is where incident response kicks in. SREs go on call to address these issues promptly, which demands a blend of technical skill and composure under pressure. Being on call sounds intense. Do SREs have a standard approach to tackling these incidents? Absolutely. They follow structured protocols to diagnose and mitigate issues, striving to find not just quick fixes, but effective long-term solutions. I see always thinking ahead. What happens if an issue keeps arising? Do they just keep fixing it? Oh no, that would be terribly monotonous. Instead, they aim to prevent recurring problems by diving into post-mortem analysis to uncover root causes. That sounds quite systematic. Does this mean SREs need to juggle both technical solutions and psychological aspects like team morale? Indeed. It's about fostering a blameless culture where the focus is on learning and improving, not on pointing fingers. Intriguing. And once the root cause is identified, what do they do to ensure it doesn't happen again? They'll often implement automated tests and conduct reliability engineering, not just to patch the issue, but to enhance the system's resilience. Automated tests sound comprehensive. Are there layers or different types of testing involved in this process? Certainly, there are various test levels from unit tests to full system integration tests, all aiming to catch issues early in the cycle. So testing isn't just a one-time affair, but a continuous cycle, correct? Exactly. It's a continuous journey of validating and ensuring that changes augment, rather than disrupt, reliability. And how do SREs decide whether they need to update their systems or protocols based on testing outcomes? They rely on collected data and insights from incidents and tests to make informed decisions about iterating on their systems and strategies. It's extraordinary how much foresight goes into these practices. How do they balance proactive versus reactive maintenance? SREs aim to be proactive by investing in robustness up front. Reactivity happens, of course, but it's all about having systems in place that limit its necessity. So their philosophy is to prevent fires rather than just putting them out. Quite a strategic mindset. Precisely, Navilet. It's a mindset that promotes sustainability, aiming to reduce surprises and promote smooth operations. I appreciate the depth of their work. Are these practices unique to tech giants like Google, or can smaller entities adopt them effectively as well? While Google might have pioneered these approaches, the core principles are scalable and can be adapted for any size organization seeking dependable services. It's encouraging to know these principles are so versatile. Do SREs feel more fulfilled working within such a framework? I'd say they do. There's a certain satisfaction in crafting systems that not only endure, but evolve alongside their users' needs. Their role seems to extend beyond engineering, almost like digital stewardship. How do they collaborate within teams? Collaboration is key. SREs work closely with developers, product managers, and operations to align visions and optimize workflows for reliability. This level of interdependence, does it foster a unique culture within their work environments? It does. A culture underpinned by trust, shared goals, and relentless pursuit of excellence is what marks successful SRE teams. I'm impressed by how holistic this role seems. Beyond technical improvements, do these practices impact business outcomes? Most certainly. Reliable services translate to satisfied users, which boosts confidence and often reflects positively on the business's bottom line. The breadth of SRE's impact is fascinating. Could the strategies you've mentioned influence future technological developments? Definitely. As new tech emerges, SRE practices are likely to evolve, leading to even more innovative stability tactics. It almost feels as if they're not just managing today, but shaping tomorrow. Quite a legacy to pursue. Exactly. No yet. They're the unsung architects building bridges to the future of reliable digital experiences. Thank you, Hu Tao. Your explanations have truly illuminated the dedication and innovation behind SRE practices. Always a pleasure, Noviet. There's much more to explore about how these digital guardians keep the world spinning. Hu Tao, after our last discussion, I've been pondering about what happens when things go wrong in the digital realm. 
How do SREs respond once the dust settles? A crucial part of the SRE's job is the post-mortem analysis. Instead of merely moving on, they engage in a deep dive to understand what went wrong. Ah, a reflective practice, I see. How does this post-mortem culture avoid focusing on blame rather than solutions? The key is to cultivate a blameless post-mortem culture. It's all about learning from failures, without pointing fingers, understanding both what faltered and what succeeded. That sounds quite wise and constructive, but are there specific tools SREs use in this post-event analysis? Definitely. Outage trackers serve as valuable tools that document incidents, the causes behind them, and the measures taken to resolve them. Outage trackers, you say? They must provide a detailed account of what transpired during these incidents. Exactly. They allow SRE teams to keep a log of incidents, making it easier to analyze trends and identify areas for improvement. Fascinating. Beyond reflecting on past incidents, how do SREs anticipate future problems? They focus heavily on testing for reliability. Through rigorous testing, they aim to catch potential issues before they manifest in production. Testing seems pivotal. Are these tests devised to mimic real-world conditions? Absolutely. They simulate various scenarios, striving to detect failures that are hard to foresee in mere theoretical analysis. And this would, no doubt, involve numerous test types. Could you elaborate on what these might include? Tests range from unit tests that focus on individual components to integration tests that ensure different modules work harmoniously. So a comprehensive suite of tests provides robust assurance against unnoticed flaws creeping into the system. Correct. It helps ensure that changes don't unexpectedly disrupt service reliability, supporting a stable rollout process. And besides discovering flaws, do these tests inform any future system enhancements? Absolutely. They offer insights into system performance and resilience, which guide improvements and optimizations. A continuous cycle of refinement and enhancement. It sounds quite sophisticated. It really is. SREs are constantly iterating on their systems based on insights gained from testing and postmortem analysis. And how effective has this approach been in practice? Do you have any insights into its impact on service reliability? The effectiveness is evident in more predictable uptime and user satisfaction. Systems become sturdier and better equipped to handle unexpected scenarios. Quite an impressive transformation from reactive problem management to predictive and preventive strategies. Exactly, Noviet. It's a testament to how insightful analysis and strategic foresight contribute powerfully to service reliability. This entire approach seems to be reshaping how we conceive of operational stability in the digital age. It does. By focusing on past learnings and thorough testing, SREs create a robust framework that supports current needs and anticipates the future. It must be challenging to maintain this level of diligence consistently. Challenge is an understatement, but it's the dedication to these practices that fosters continuous improvement and reliability. Is there a reliance on collaboration with other teams, like development or operations, to sustain these efforts? Indeed. Collaboration is critical. Open communication channels ensure that insights are shared and leveraged across teams for comprehensive solutions. It's admirable to see how connected each function is, enhancing the resilience of the entire ecosystem. And that interconnectedness is the essence of a successful SRE strategy. Individual moving parts working in harmony to improve the whole. Are there examples of how this interconnectedness has directly influenced the resolution of major incidents? Absolutely. Cross-functional retrospectives often lead to innovative solutions to complex issues that a single perspective might overlook. Such adaptability and synchronicity must bring about profound organizational culture shifts as well. Very much so. It reinforces a culture of learning, sharing, and perpetual enhancement across the board. Thank you, Hu Tao. This journey from failure to fortitude through learning offers valuable insights into digital stewardship. Always a pleasure to share, Noviet. There's a fascinating expanse to uncover when it comes to how SREs navigate challenges and build resilience. Hu Tao. Your previous explanations have left me intrigued about the more advanced aspects of SRE work. 
How do they go beyond basic practices? Ah, you're in for a treat, Nouviette. As SREs hone their craft, they delve into advanced activities like capacity planning, which is crucial for anticipating future needs and avoiding bottlenecks. Capacity planning sounds pivotal. How does it impact the reliability of services? Well, it's all about ensuring enough resources are available to meet user demands without overextending oneself. Think of it as knowing how much tea you need for a party without running dry or wasting any. I see it's about balance and efficiency. But how do SREs ensure that resources are utilized evenly across their systems? That's where load balancing comes into play. It's like directing traffic so that no single road becomes too congested, ensuring smooth travel for all data packets. Load balancing. Yes, I can imagine how spreading the load maintains equilibrium. Are there specific tools or strategies SREs use for this? Absolutely. There are specialized algorithms and tools designed to distribute requests evenly across data centers, optimizing performance and reliability. And when it comes to system development, how do SREs contribute to creating robust systems? SREs play a key role in designing scalable and resilient architectures from the ground up. They focus on creating systems that not only meet current needs, but can also evolve seamlessly. That sounds quite forward thinking. Is there a particular philosophy they adhere to during these developments? Definitely. The aim is to integrate reliability into every stage of development, ensuring systems are built with fail-safes and adaptability at their core. Does such foresight extend to the launch of new products? Oh, certainly. Product launches necessitate a meticulous strategy to guarantee reliability right from the start. It's about giving users a seamless experience from day zero. Ensuring reliability from the onset must require extensive collaboration across teams. How do SREs manage this? Collaboration is indeed pivotal. SREs work closely with developers and product teams to align on goals and strategies, ensuring a unified approach to reliability. Could you explain how data integrity fits into these advanced activities? Data integrity is the heart of maintaining trustworthiness in digital systems. SREs strive to ensure that data remains consistent and accurate from storage to retrieval. How do they ensure this integrity amidst distributed and sometimes chaotic environments? By using robust systems that validate data at every step, ensuring what you input is exactly what you retrieve, no tricks or sneaky alterations. I imagine this requires quite sophisticated technologies and protocols. Indeed it does. Techniques like distributed consensus and checksums play a significant role in maintaining data integrity across expansive systems. As these practices advance, do they align with broader company strategies, perhaps at an organizational level? Absolutely. These advanced practices are meticulously integrated into Google's overarching strategy to build resilient and user-centric digital environments. Do you think this strategic integration enhances the overall efficiency and effectiveness of a company? Without a doubt, these strategies not only ensure technical reliability, but also drive business success by enhancing user trust and satisfaction. It's remarkable how these digital intricacies contribute to the larger picture. Do SREs feel directly connected to the company's vision and success? Very much so. By reinforcing reliable systems, they play a vital role in the company's ability to innovate and expand its digital horizon. That's truly inspiring. As technology and user expectations evolve, I imagine SRE practices will continue to adapt and advance. Indeed, they will. The landscape is ever-changing, requiring SREs to be perpetual learners and innovators, always staying a step ahead. And as they advance these practices, I assume they will encounter novel challenges and opportunities. Precisely, Novilet. Each challenge is an opportunity to refine and enhance their strategies, leading to even greater feats of reliability. Your insights have once again opened my eyes to the complex yet thrilling world of SREs. Thank you, Hu Tao, for sharing. Always a pleasure, Noviet. There's a vast and fascinating world of reliability engineering ready to be explored.